it's Anya from Anya Marta Art and today I wanted to share with you how I do my kind of watercolor digital version patterns and I'll show you a little bit of troubleshooting as well what you need to look out for so let's get to it first of all I chose my document so the image is 8000 pixels by 8000 pixels at 300 resolution it does sound like a bit of an overkill but I rather create larger file that can be used later for any sort of projects or any product uh, than having that too small and then crying that I need to redo it again. So with vector art, you are able to scale it, scale it to any size you like, but because in Photoshop we are working with pixels, with raster type, it's unfortunately you have to really pay attention the way you set up your files so here we have this one set up at this point and okay um, first of all my background is going to be light but it's not never ever stays that white so what i do i have my palettes and this is my favorite kind of palette i created ages ago and this is subtle but difference you can choose whatever you like you can choose just kind of like a lighter ve version of any color but I suggest for watercolors to choose something that is really delicate and, and not far off white so it could be any tint it could be for example like a pinky or bluey or a very gray but as long as it's really light the reason is because with those brushes with the watercolor brushes you can see through so if it's really dark it's just not going to look attractive so let's just lock that layer in so we don't have any picking up by mistake and what we're going to do now is view pattern preview and that gives us a great preview for for to build our pattern and just to let you know it could be any shape you like it doesn't have to be square I just chose square because it's easy to kind of build things around it but it could be rectangle or yeah rectangle pretty much for, for the pattern preview uh, and let's go with empty layer so just press plus here and here we're going to kind of roughly build our pattern um, composition so i'm just gonna choose brown you can choose any color it's just for rough sketching and i'm using a pencil choose any pencil from your library and i'm pressing here which gives a variation and when you press harder or softer it gives you variation and opacity to 50 roughly and i'm going to make this brush a little bigger so that's the way I like to sketch. It's a little bit softer. It's not so scary. <laughs> so um, that's my choice. And here we're going to compose the pattern. So let's start with the first set. And all my illustration forgot to mention going to be cherries. So here and just like that. And another one. And they could be a, a little, not so symmetrical, just with a one, both, both little. It gives it impression of a bowl, that one. And another here. And the purpose here is to create a roughly our setup for the whole pattern. So you can zoom out composition it's more to create a composition than anything else i don't want this to be directly underneath so maybe kind of off and facing that way that might be a good idea i think we could squeeze another one one here mm, doesn't look very nice Okay. Do you know that feeling when someone watches you, like your hands, uh, looking at your hands when you're doing something? That's exactly how I feel now, guys, because you're, <laughs> you're watching what I'm doing. 
I know it's only like a recording, but it's really stressful. So here is kind of empty space. What I could do, I could select that and move it a little bit. Will that work? Cool. So I'm happy with this setup, roughly. Good. And now we're going to create those cherries one by one and this is where the troubleshooting could come in because if you have a cherry we're going to have to create new layers that are smart objects and some of the cherries are on the verge of beyond the square basically if that makes sense and that will cause us problem let's take this one for example this cherry here if i create new layer because this could be potentially created into new layer and we can just draw over it fine the whole thing the whole lot but if in the future you want to have a little bit more freedom you would draw all of those separately and that's what i'm trying to do this time because you know let me just slow down so we have to create all the smart objects from the scratch for each cherry so let's do it and this is new layer this is easy because let's take opacity down a bit easy because this was not into pieces Okay, and convert to smart object. Oh, not on the thumbnail on here. Great. And now if I visit that, double click, it just gives me a nice full cherry. No problem. I'm just gonna close that. So what we're gonna do now is select both layers and move it. So next cherry will be this one here. So next layer and, oh, sorry, I'm not drawing. This is my drawing pen. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a sketch so we know roughly. Uh, convert to smart object. Again, I'm making the same mistake every time. So make sure you select all three layers. Otherwise, it will not move the right way. Everything will then move. Oop, to grab it by the... Uh -oh. Okay, this could be a little bit tricky, so just watch out that all of those layers are selected. Otherwise, if you just select one, just one thing will move. We need to make sure everything is moving. Okay, these are done. So next one is here. So again, new layer. And if it does sound a little bit complicated uh, for now, uh, don't worry. It is like a second nature after a couple of tries. And convert to smart objects. Now selecting everything together move to and we want to try that one now so basically you need to make sure maybe arranging that way so we can do both at this next one so it's not on any edge of that square and convert to smart Oop. every time honestly you can explain to me a million times and I'll make the same mistake. But luckily it's not, not the big one, not a big problem. Okay, and... <laughs> oh, have we got everything now? Let's just check. Yep, I think so. So we got covered all the cherries. Let's get rid of that sketch uh, one and now double click and we're going to create new layer. Grab our brush. So where did I get my watercolor brush? 
Um, if you are a member or if you subscribe to Photoshop, you will get access to many, many, many brushes by Kyle Webster. And he used to have paid brushes and now he works with Adobe and you are having access to so many amazing brushes. And he has this watercolor range, which is brilliant. Mm, and this is one of his brushes. I did move it and uh, renamed it because when I do my sets, I tend to do that. So I cannot tell you which brush exactly that is. But if you open his brushes, you'll fall in love with many different textured, not textured. So with this one, when I go over, I do not lift my pen up. And then second go is kind of creating that shadow. Okay, this is too much, so I'm going to reduce the opacity and try one more time. I'm trying to remember roughly opacity uh, number so I can recreate in my next painting. And another one for the leaves, so toggling here. Grabbing that color. All right, we need to go back to our 100% here. So, and I'm not lifting up, just going over. Another layer, which will be stems. And I'm just choosing nice, chunky kind of brush here a bit like a pencil maybe once nice and confident so the line is strong smooth no problem and one more thing let's add highlights to that cherry so I'm going to choose pure white and bring opacity to around 70 -ish and go back to my watercolor brush See how that oh it's so cute and just that highlights gives a little pop looks very nice you can do like double or single i think i'll still stick to single uh, get rid of hide that sketch here and save so you just press file save and what it does you can close it it updates it on your pattern here so now we have to do the same thing for all the other cherries so one by one and i'm going to speed it up because it's going to be very boring for you to watch just the same thing over and over again And here we are, all the cherries are updated now. We can see um, they all work as smart object and have been uh, done. If you want to change anything about, for example, this cherry, I'm not quite sure if I like the shading here. So I'm just gonna open it and look, it preserves all those lovely layers. So I might draw the uh, sketch back on and I might draw the cherry bits again. So let's get back to that red. Um, and some large, 100%. And I'm just gonna go over, is that the right pencil? I don't think so. Oh. Wrong brush, but I'm good now. Two. And just adding on a bit of a shading. And the shading was done at a lower opacity just to make it a bit more delicate okay switch off the sketch and file save and close and that's been updated and everything looking pretty cherry 
If you want to move any of those objects, it's not a problem as well, even if they on the on the verge here. So you can just grab because they are smart objects. It's easy, easy to move them and there's no error as well. So that might be a good idea just to have a final look if there's anything we need to change. Adjust and that looks a little bit like it could be better at the angle. Just give a little bit of movement in here. I like that they are spaced out, but if you want to create different look, what you could do is kind of go overlapping as well. It could give you a different feel, but that's really, really nice. And the other thing you could do is add a little bit filler in between. And for this one, I recommend just working straight in here. So I would create another layer. Let's get, for example, what would work here? Orange would, would look nice, little orange dots or little green, sorry, blue dots. Let's take this color and see. The best thing is just to test things out. So we have the, the same kind of watercolor paint, paint brush, and just see what it looks like with a cute little Spot. I think they're a bit too big, so I'm going to make much smaller. Okay. And maybe spread them out a little bit more. It's optional. Uh, you don't have to do the little fillers. But I think they kind of give an uh, extra factor of cute to this cherry design and it's a good way to practice and this is our pattern done so what you need to do now you can save it as a psd file at this point and you can just flatten it down so layer flatten image and come out of your pattern preview so view pattern preview and this is your tile your seamless pattern finish so you can save it uh, for spoon flower i save it in three different sizes you can see my video about spoon flower sizing saving up uh, on my channel and i hope you enjoy that please let me know if you have any questions at all if you have any suggestions for any videos i would love to hear from you and see you next time Thank you. Bye-bye.